of the lands that we have uh, discovered down there and to make new discoveries. There's an area there as big as the United States that we can make ours. In the heart of Antarctica, a daring explorer embarked on a journey that would shatter the boundaries of human knowledge. Admiral Richard Byrd, a name synonymous with exploration and courage, ventured into the icy abyss with a mission that would change our understanding of the world forever. As we unearth the legacy of this intrepid explorer, we are left to ponder. What secrets did he unravel in the enigmatic depths of Antarctica? Did his discoveries hint at ancient civilizations, hidden technologies, or otherworldly phenomena lurking beneath the ice? Join us on a captivating expedition through time and ice as we delve into the 15 astonishing discoveries made by Admiral Richard Byrd during his legendary Antarctic expedition. Number 15. Journey to the Core of the Earth Byrd, a distinguished naval commander and explorer from the United States, was not only an exceptional aviator but also a pioneering figure in polar exploration and logistics. His remarkable achievements earned him the prestigious Medal of Honor, the highest recognition for bravery awarded by the United States. Byrd's remarkable Arctic journey began in 1924 when he assumed leadership of a small naval aviation unit as part of Commander D.B. McMillan's Arctic expedition to Western Greenland. This marked the initiation of Byrd's awe-inspiring exploration into the frigid realms of the North. Yet what truly sets Byrd's tale apart is the astonishing discovery he made during his expeditions, a revelation that challenged our fundamental understanding of the planet itself. Unfortunately, these groundbreaking findings were met with resistance and suppression by the authorities of the time. Imagine the intrigue and enigma surrounding Byrd's concealed revelations. What could he have stumbled upon that was so profound and contentious? Did his discoveries contradict established scientific knowledge or challenge prevailing narratives? These questions linger tantalizingly, awaiting unraveling. Byrd's fascination with flying over icy landscapes began when he soared above the glistening sea ice and majestic glaciers of western Greenland. It was there that he first encountered a captivating rumor, a hidden entryway to the enigmatic core of the Earth, nestled within the frozen depths of the South Pole. Intrigued by this fantastical notion, he embarked on daring expeditions, skillfully piloting his planes toward the uncharted territories of the South Pole. Yet, fate had a different course in mind for him. Number 14. The Icy Expanse of the North Pole In 1926, on May 9th, a remarkable achievement took place when aviators Byrd and his skillful pilot Floyd Bennett declared themselves the first to successfully fly over the icy expanse of the North Pole. Their epic adventure began in Kings Bay, Pittsburgh, and Norway where they took off in their trusty Fokker trimotor aircraft for an astonishing 15 and a half hours. During their flight through the frigid skies, they encountered minor obstacles, such as an oil leak in the starboard engine. However, undeterred by this hiccup, they pressed on with unwavering determination, driven by the thrill of exploration. The news of their triumphant achievement spread rapidly, and the nation erupted in celebration, hailing Byrd and Bennett as national heroes. Their bravery and audacity captured the imagination of people far and wide, and their unwavering spirit and perseverance during the historic flight earned them the prestigious Congressional Medal of Honor, a testament to their extraordinary accomplishment. Despite overwhelming acclaim, some controversy lingered as doubts arose about whether their aircraft had truly reached the elusive North Pole. Nonetheless, the impact of their daring journey remains significant, inspiring generations of explorers and leaving an indelible mark in the history of aviation and exploration. Number 13. Dormant Volcano In the past, some doubters questioned the accuracy of their navigation and the truthfulness of their claims about Mount Sidley. At that time, many explorers relied on traditional methods, but Byrd used aeroplanes and modern tools during his expeditions to safely navigate through the challenging terrain. During one of his remarkable expeditions, something truly breathtaking came into view, a colossal, dormant volcano named Mount Sidley. Notably, this volcano stands as the largest of its kind in Antarctica and holds a special distinction among the renowned seven summits of volcanic peaks worldwide. 
Mount Sidley's remote location, far away from human civilization, adds an extra layer of allure, attracting adventurous mountaineers seeking extraordinary experiences. Its distant, isolated setting beckons those yearning to conquer uncharted territories and make remarkable memories amidst the untouched natural beauty. Number 12. Antarctica. Mapping. Bird led several expeditions to Antarctica, each one filled with impressive accomplishments. His first voyage, which took place from 1928 to 1930, marked the start of his exploration journey. During this trip, he established a base called Little America on the frozen surface of the Ross Ice Shelf. From there, Byrd and his team embarked on exciting flights over Antarctica, mapping new areas and discovering hidden mountain ranges. Not content to simply rest on his achievements, Byrd undertook a second mission from 1933 to 1935. In this bold adventure, he built a second base known as Little America II. Remarkably, he spent five long winter months alone at an advanced base located 123 miles away from the main camp. This period of solitude and isolation truly tested Byrd's resilience and determination. Number 11. Western Island. In the pursuit of discovery, his thirst for exploration led him on a third voyage from 1939 to 1941 aptly named Little America III. During this journey, he made a remarkable discovery, Western Island, which added to his list of significant findings. Despite challenges, Byrd's unyielding curiosity and determination to uncover the secrets of the icy continent remained steadfast. However, it was his fourth and most ambitious Antarctic expedition, known as Little America IV, or Operation High Jump, that truly showcased his dedication. Taking place from 1946 to 1947, this expedition involved an astounding fleet of 13 ships and an impressive 4,000 personnel. It stood as the most extensive Antarctic expedition to date, underscoring Byrd's unparalleled commitment to unraveling the mysteries of the icy continent. This massive undertaking earned its title Operation Deep Freeze, symbolizing the depth of the effort Byrd and his team invested in exploring and understanding Antarctica. Number 10. Photographing the Breathtaking Coastlines In 1955 and 1956, Byrd led a remarkable expedition called Operation Deep Freeze. This extraordinary adventure occurred during the International Geophysical Year, a period of intense scientific research throughout the mission Admiral Byrd made significant discoveries that greatly expanded our understanding of Antarctica. However, some of Admiral Byrd's most captivating findings remained secret for many years. It was not until his son stumbled upon his long-lost diary that these revelations came to light. Surprisingly, the diary had somehow ended up in the possession of a person named Tawain Wakaushush. This remarkable discovery led to the establishment of the International Society for a Complete Earth, now known as the Hollow Earth Research Society. The diary contained incredible revelations that challenged conventional wisdom and piqued the interest of researchers. But it wasn't until the 1970s that the contents of the diary were finally revealed to the public. To ensure the diary's significance reached a wider audience, it was passed on to Dan Weiss, a renowned researcher and author specializing in UFOs. Upon its publication, the world was introduced to Byrd's hidden discoveries, providing a tantalizing glimpse into a realm of possibilities. The revelations within the diary sparked widespread curiosity and ignited passionate debates. These extraordinary insights found within the diary pushed the boundaries of scientific exploration and inspired further investigations into the mysteries of the hollow Earth. Admiral Byrd's mysterious voyage to Antarctica continues to captivate the minds of researchers and adventurers alike. The missing diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd is like a hidden treasure filled with extraordinary tales. It reveals a fascinating story about a mysterious voyage he embarked upon over the North Pole on February 9, 1947. At that time, Admiral Byrd was leading Task Force 68 stationed at the planet's southernmost point as part of an ambitious mission called Operation High Jump. This was a six-month adventure to explore the vast, icy landscapes of Antarctica. The expedition was no ordinary affair. Task Force 68 set sail from Norfolk, Virginia on December 2, 1946, 
fully prepared for an epic journey of exploration and discovery. However, something unexpected happened during this grand expedition. After approximately two months of mapping and photographing the breathtaking coastlines and hidden interiors of Antarctica, the mission came to an abrupt end. The reasons behind this sudden conclusion remained shrouded in mystery. It is precisely at this perplexing juncture that the missing diary comes into play. Its existence raises numerous questions. How did the International Scientific Council come into possession of this enigmatic journal? Why would Admiral Byrd venture over the North Pole while leading a high-profile Antarctic expedition? One can only speculate about the hidden motives and extraordinary circumstances that led Admiral Byrd to take flight across the icy expanse of the North Pole. Perhaps unknown phenomena or uncharted territories beckoned him, captivating his curiosity and driving him to explore beyond the boundaries of his assigned mission. Number 9. Enemy with Amazing Flying Objects In a captivating journal titled Flight Log, Base Camp Arctic, Byrd documented his extraordinary experiences during a mission to the Arctic. As he ventured north, just a few hours into the journey, he stumbled upon a breathtaking range of mountains that he had never seen before. These towering peaks stood as a testament to the hidden wonders of the polar region, adding excitement to his expedition. However, Byrd's journey took an unexpected turn when he encountered difficulties with the magnetic and gyro compasses on board his aircraft. Surprisingly, these essential navigation tools began to spin and sway unpredictably. The researchers accompanying him speculated that this erratic behavior might have been caused by the aircraft flying over the North Pole itself, given the reference to the base camp in the Arctic and their northerly heading. Just two weeks after Byrd's Arctic journey, Chilean newspapers reported a new and strange event involving him. They claimed that Byrd encountered a different enemy, amazing flying objects with mysterious abilities. These objects could travel long distances and move quickly between the poles. A dangerous battle took place in the Weddell Sea for about 20 minutes. The unidentified craft emerged from the water and attacked Byrd's group, resulting in many injuries and deaths. This incident added a layer of intrigue to Byrd's expedition, raising questions about the unexplained phenomena in the polar regions. The courageous explorer's encounters with both the awe-inspiring natural beauty and the enigmatic flying objects added an even more thrilling dimension to his already remarkable journey. Number 8. Vibrant and Lush Area In his diary, Byrd recorded an extraordinary flight he took, which was far from an ordinary journey. To his amazement, he found himself soaring through a mysterious mountain range. Instead of the expected icy and snowy landscapes, he stumbled upon a vibrant and lush area teeming with life. This remarkable discovery happened during his February expedition into the depths of the Earth. During his flight, Byrd claims to have caught sight of a massive creature called a mammoth, an ancient and majestic beast that was believed to be long extinct. However, this was just the beginning of his astonishing encounter. As he delved deeper into this captivating realm, he encountered even more astonishing wonders that left him in awe. The details of what he witnessed and experienced during this extraordinary flight will surely captivate and intrigue anyone with an adventurous spirit. Number 7. Rainbow City Made of Crystal As he continued his flight, an intriguing and irresistible force drew him towards an unfamiliar city, later revealed to be called Agartha. However, the journey was anything but smooth. His navigation instruments started malfunctioning, causing confusion and concern. The gyroscope swung back and forth erratically, rendering the plane's controls useless. It was a disorienting and unnerving experience for Byrd and his crew. Amidst this puzzling situation, something truly extraordinary happened. Disc-shaped aircraft, glowing radiantly and adorned with swastikas, appeared and began escorting Byrd's plane towards Agartha. These unknown flying machines seemed to protect and guide them toward their destination. Upon landing, Byrd and his radio men were greeted by a group of tall beings with blonde hair. They were instructed to disembark from the aircraft and were then escorted to a meeting with a remarkable figure known as the Master. It was during this meeting that Byrd discovered he had entered the Arihani Domain, a hidden realm deep within the Earth's interior. Intriguingly, the Arihani Domain has remained a secret from the world, 
holding countless enigmatic wonders and mysteries waiting to be explored. According to his diary, as they flew over the pole, they entered into a lush and green area which astonished him. Furthermore, he reported seeing a shimmering rainbow city made of crystal. He claimed that his airplane was guided to the ground by disc-shaped flying objects, and he was taken into a vast, cavernous area where he met a being referred to as the Master. This being expressed concern about humanity's use of nuclear weapons, particularly mentioning the destruction caused in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They hoped that humanity would cease such destructive actions. This account from Admiral Byrd's diary is especially significant for UFO researchers, given that the modern UFO era began after World War II and the detonation of the first atomic bombs. Numerous UFO sightings have been reported near nuclear missile silos, indicating a potential connection between advanced beings and humanity's nuclear activities. However, Admiral Byrd was allegedly ordered to keep his encounter confidential and was not allowed to speak about it publicly. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that this story may indicate a profound connection between ancient traditions of beings living inside the Earth and the contemporary UFO phenomenon. They speculate that we might eventually come face to face with these inner Earth beings. Number 6. Disc-Shaped Aircraft In less than three weeks after the reported encounter with unidentified disc-shaped aircraft, a crucial mission known as Operation High Jump was unexpectedly canceled. Task Force 68, a group of military personnel, found themselves stationed in Chilean ports following the cancellation. One of the crew members, after being debriefed by the Pentagon on March 11, informed the media about a strange battle they had against these disc-shaped objects emerging from the sea. However, all communication from the mission's leader, Byrd, was mysteriously silenced after that point, leaving no further updates. Later that year in July, there were numerous UFO sightings reported in residential areas across the United States. During this time, rumors spread about the recovery of a disc-shaped object from a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. The incident gained significant attention and became an intriguing mystery for many. Scott Waring from the ET database reports an intriguing finding during his virtual exploration of Antarctica using Google Maps. While examining the satellite imagery, he stumbled upon a photograph displaying an object partially buried beneath the snow and ice. Upon closer inspection, the object took on the appearance of an alien spacecraft, featuring a metallic-like body, a triangular shape, and a noticeable hump in the middle. These discoveries have sparked speculations about the potential presence of aliens on Earth, possibly spanning centuries or even thousands of years. The notion that extraterrestrial beings might have visited our planet and left behind traces of their encounters is both captivating and thought-provoking, adding a sense of mystery to the unfolding narrative. The search for answers continues as researchers and enthusiasts delve deeper into this enigmatic revelation. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the heart of Antarctica, a breathtaking discovery has stirred the world's imagination. A crystal city, hidden beneath the frozen ice allegedly stumbled upon by the intrepid explorer, Admiral Richard Byrd. This enigmatic find has become the subject of intense debate. Behold a city of crystalline splendor with its secrets shrouded in mystery. Is this a long-lost civilization, preserved in icy slumber for a eons, or a mere figment of imagination, playing tricks on our minds? As the frozen landscape unveils its secrets, questions abound. Could this incredible find rewrite the history books, challenging all we thought we knew about our past? Is it possible that an advanced society once thrived in this icy realm, defying the odds and leaving behind a city carved in crystal? But hold your breath. Skepticism surrounds the discovery, with doubters raising their voices. Some say it is a mere optical illusion, a mirage in the icy wilderness, or perhaps a fantastical hoax to ensnare our curiosity. But will we ever unlock the truth behind this tantalizing enigma? Or know for certain if Admiral Byrd indeed stumbled upon a crystalline wonder, or if it was all a daring fiction? Antarctica keeps its secrets close, guarding the Crystal City's truth with an icy grip. As the debate rages on, one thing remains certain. This extraordinary tale of discovery has captivated hearts and minds across the globe, leaving us yearning for the answers that lie deep within the frozen abyss. Number 5. 
Nazi colony in Antarctica? Many believed Operation High Jump was in response to rumors about a Nazi colony called New Schwabenland. It was thought that Adolf Hitler might have established this colony in Antarctica during World War II, and some even speculated that Hitler himself might have escaped there. In a book called Our Earth, the author was fascinated by the idea of a hollow Earth. They talked about an explorer named Byrd, who in 1927 supposedly had an extraordinary journey. According to the story, Byrd found entrances to the hollow Earth at both the North and South Poles. He entered through the North Pole and returned two years later, passing through the openings at both poles. During Operation High Jump in 1946, which aimed to explore Antarctica, Byrd's journey took an intriguing turn. He reportedly flew halfway into the South Polar opening and then had a remarkable encounter. As the story goes, he saw a disc-shaped craft and even fired at it. This unexpected event led some to wonder if Byrd's mission was redirected away from Antarctica because of this encounter. This encounter raises many questions. Why was Byrd silenced and not allowed to openly discuss his experience? If knowledge of this encounter hadn't been suppressed, how might it have changed our understanding of the world? Some even speculate whether the wave of UFO sightings during that time could be connected to this specific encounter. While we can't be certain about the truth of Byrd's adventures, there have been many reports of UFO sightings in Antarctica. UFO hunters and researchers have documented these sightings, suggesting a mysterious presence on the icy continent. The truth remains uncertain, but these intriguing stories continue to capture the imagination of those fascinated by the unknown. Number 4. Hollow Earth Theory There exists a theory known as the Hollow Earth Theory, which proposes the existence of concealed worlds beneath the surface of our planet. This concept has endured for a considerable time, dating back to ancient civilizations. Diverse cultures associated it with mythical realms such as the Greek Hades, the Nordic Svar Alfheim, the Jewish Sheol, and the Christian Hell. The philosopher Plato initially introduced the notion of a hollow earth. Advancing to the year 1692, a scientist named Edmund Halley introduced his unique variation of the hollow earth model. Halley postulated that earth resembles a thick shell, encompassing not just one but two inner concentric shells along with a central core. To determine the dimensions of these inner shells, Halley examined the diameters of other planets, such as Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Each of these inner shells, as per Halley's proposal, possesses its own distinct atmosphere and magnetic properties, and they rotate at varying speeds. Halley's motivation for proposing this theory stemmed from perplexing compass readings that defied conventional explanation. He hypothesized that Earth's unconventional magnetic behavior could be elucidated by the presence of these inner shells. However, Halley's theory doesn't end there. He also speculated that within these inner shells, an entire ecosystem of living organisms might flourish. Halley even conjectured that the captivating aurora borealis, the enchanting lights that occasionally grace the sky, could be attributed to gases escaping from within Earth. Remarkably, other scholars like Leonard Euler expanded upon Halley's concept. Euler proposed a similar idea of a hollow Earth, but with multiple shells instead of just two. What's even more captivating is that Euler envisioned an inner sun within the hollow Earth, radiating light for an advanced civilization thriving within the depths. Nevertheless, it's essential to acknowledge that Euler also entertained the notion of a solid Earth. In his correspondence with a German prince, he contemplated a thought experiment where Earth is solid. Thus, even among these esteemed thinkers, varying ideas and conjectures about our planet's nature emerged. In the early 19th century, Sir John Leslie built upon Euler's idea and named the inner regions of our planet Pluto and Proserpine. It's fascinating to note that this was not related to the later discovery of the dwarf planet Pluto in 1829 by John Cleves Sims, Jr., he had his own vision of hollow Earth. He proposed that our planet had a thick hollow shell, about 800 miles deep, with openings at both poles. Inside, there were four inner shells, each with openings at the poles as well. Sims gained considerable popularity for his ideas, thanks to his supporter James McBride. Sims even planned a trip to the North Pole to prove his theory, but it was canceled by U.S. President Andrew Jackson. Tragically, Sims passed away in the same year, 1829. After Sims's death, 
Jeremiah Reynolds, another follower of the Hollow Earth theory, took up the cause. Reynolds gave lectures on the subject and called for an expedition to explore the Hollow Earth. However, he eventually shifted his focus and embarked on his own journey to Antarctica. Due to his previous controversies and insults toward others, Reynolds did not participate in the United States' Great Exploring Journey of 1838-1842. The pursuit of Hollow Earth theory during this period was filled with intriguing characters and adventures, leaving a lasting impact on the scientific community's curiosity about the mysteries of our planet. Number 3. Phantom Realms and Inner Suns Among those who put forth the idea of a hollow earth was William Reed, who, in 1906, authored a book titled Phantom of the Poles. In his book, he proposed that the Earth is hollow without inner shells or inner suns. Marshall Gardner also supported the concept of a hollow Earth. In 1913, he wrote a book called A Journey to the Earth's Interior, which he later expanded in 1920. Gardner introduced the idea of an inner sun and even created a model to explain his theory. Interestingly, he didn't mention Reed's ideas. Around the same time, in the early 20th century, Vladimir Obuches wrote a fictional novel called Platonia. This novel imagined a hollow earth inhabited by prehistoric creatures with a central sun. The story described a hole in the Arctic that connected the earth's interior with the surface. Some people actually believe in the existence of ascended masters living in underground tunnels within a hollow earth. They associate places like Antarctica, the North Pole, Tibet, Peru, and Mount Shasta in California with gateways to this hidden world called Agartha. Some even go so far as to suggest that these areas are the origins of UFOs. This intriguing concept of a hollow earth and the various interpretations and beliefs surrounding it have sparked curiosity and speculation among many individuals over the years. Number two, UFOs originate from the Ring Nebula. In 1969, a fascinating book titled The Hollow Earth surfaced, supposedly authored by Dr. Raymond Bernard. This book delved into intriguing concepts, exploring the idea of planets having hollow interiors. What's even more interesting is its proposal that UFOs originate from the Ring Nebula. Surprisingly, the author's pseudonym Bernard turned out to be Walter Sieg Meister, as Martin Gardner revealed in his essay. However, a more complete story about Bernard Sieg Meister came to light in 1989 through Walter Captain Minkel's book, Subterranean World, 100,000 Years of Dragons, Dwarfs, Lost Races, and UFOs from Inside the Earth. It revealed that during the years 1945 to 1949, Ray Palmer, the editor of a science fiction magazine called Amazing Stories, published a series of stories by Richard Sharp Shaver, known as the Shaver Mystery. According to Shaver, an advanced prehistoric species constructed an extensive network of underground caves. Their degenerate descendants, known as the Darrow, allegedly still inhabit these underground realms. They use the advanced technology left behind by ancient races to torment people on the surface. These tormenting voices, believed to come from inexplicable sources, were cited as evidence by Shaver and were supposedly heard by many individuals, adding to the intrigue surrounding the underground world. Number 1. Concave Hollow Earth Theory. In the past, some people proposed an intriguing concept known as the concave hollow earth theory. Instead of humans living on the outer surface of the earth, they believed there might be a cosmos inside the hollow world, akin to a Dyson sphere. Back in 1869, Dr. Cyrus T. Day, a New York-based doctor, put forward a similar idea called cellular cosmogony. Inspired by this notion, he founded a cult called Koreshanity, and their main colony still exists in Florida to this day. The followers of Koroshanity claim to have demonstrated the Earth's curvature by surveying the Florida shoreline using special technology. As time went on, the hollow Earth theory gained interest and support from German writers in the 20th century. Figures such as Peter Bender, Johannes Langkamp Neupert, and Foritz Broad contributed to the idea, adding further depth to the notion of a hidden world beneath us. There are intriguing tales that suggest Adolf Hitler may have been influenced by the concept of a concave hollow earth. According to these accounts, Hitler dispatched an expedition to spy on the British Navy by pointing cameras toward the sky. His belief was that the sky above us forms a spherical cavern filled with stars from which he hoped to gather crucial information. 
Taking this notion further, an Egyptian mathematician named Mustafa Abdelkad wrote scientific publications describing a detailed mapping of this concave Earth model. He proposed that light beams would travel in circular paths, gradually slowing down as they approached the center of the cavern. However, conventional scientific cosmology posits that no energy can reach the center of this cavern, which is believed to be at a finite distance away from Earth. Martin Gardner, a renowned writer, suggested that if a drill were to penetrate this cavern, it would seemingly extend endlessly until reaching a point at infinity, corresponding to the center of the Earth. Nevertheless, this theory is often dismissed based on Occam's razor principle, which encourages us to choose simpler explanations when multiple options are available. If one were to hypothetically find themselves inside the Earth, according to gravity theory, they wouldn't feel pulled towards the outer surface. Instead, they would experience a near weightless sensation due to Isaac Newton's idea that inside a hollow shell, the gravity force is zero. However, on the inner surface, there would still be a small gravity force, stemming from the Earth's non-perfect spherical shape and the gravitational effects of the Moon and Earth's rotation. These factors would create a slight outward pull. Interestingly, if the hollow Earth were made of the same materials as the exterior, it would weigh less, resulting in weaker gravity on the outer surface than what we experience today. While these ideas about a hollow Earth offer an imaginative perspective that blends historical anecdotes with scientific principles, they are not widely accepted by the scientific community. Their validity remains uncertain, leaving us with fascinating but unproven theories. Which of these scary findings in Antarctica did you find the most fascinating? Let us know your opinions in the comments below.